Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from Michael, and it is, what if there was an operator in Rainbow Six Siege that had a bag like Rook that would resupply ammo to other operators and himself? It would also give each of the other operators one of their extra gadgets, nitro cell, bandits, battery, etc. Well, admittedly, the first aspect of this guy really isn't all that impressive. If that was all that he brought to the table, and this is a question that I get a lot. A lot of people like the idea of having uh, an operator that resupplies ammo. There are very few situations in Rainbow Six Siege where I run out of ammo in my primary weapon. Like, I could probably count the amount of times that it's happened on one hand. Unless you're just spraying down range continuously, or maybe this would bring in a new meta where you are suppressing the enemy more when you are playing on defense, I just don't think that that would be all that viable. And I have a feeling that many people probably wouldn't even pick this guy, and he would go into the worthless category. Uh, the reason why I like this guy, though, and could see him being absolutely incredible, is the idea of him resupplying or giving your entire team one extra of all of their gadgets. If you had two nitro cells on Bandit, that would be incredible. Not only would it just give you more options, you could then use one of the nitro cells to open up one of the walls between uh, the bomb sites, for example, but you could also just have two nitro cells to deal with a lot of shield users. Being able to put one extra barbed wire down on the ground would also be advantageous. Barbed wire is really good in Rainbow Six Siege, and just simply having another for every single one of the operators on your side would be absolutely incredible. More shields, more maybe more reinforced walls, all of this would really uh, lend itself to kind of just reinforcing more of the core aspects of the people that are on your team. Now, the downside of this guy is that he wouldn't really synergize very well with Rook, who is honestly one of the best defensive operators in the game. If you had this guy with Rook, they really wouldn't complement each other very well. And also, he himself doesn't really get a cool gadget all of it his own. Like, he, of course, gives everyone more gadgets, but he himself is more of just a body. He's just got his gun, and he plays more of the supportive role. Uh, the real question is, though, would he be well-balanced? It's hard to say. The only way that we'd get a true representation if this guy was any good or not is if they add him into Rainbow Six Siege. I just don't know how giving everyone on your team one extra gadget would impact the gameplay. Would giving the guys that have Nitro Cell, two of them at their disposal, be overpowered? I don't know. Being able to blanket the entire objective in barbed wire, would that be a little bit too good? I, I don't know. And while I don't think that he would be blatantly overpowered, it would really change up the meta, and honestly, the only way we would have any idea if this guy was any good is to try it out ourselves. And so just in general, I like the concept. I like how this would be kind of a substitute to Rook right now. Rook is pretty much a must pick. If you don't have Rook, you're not necessarily putting yourself at a massive disadvantage when you're on defense, but he is very, very good, and this would give you kind of a different option to mix up that dynamic a little bit. And so I like the idea. I think the, the ammo part of it is pretty much worthless, but it still could be good. But that gadget component really makes things very interesting. Uh, the next question is, with the reveal of Battlefield 5 coming soon, are you worried that it's going to be futuristic? Why would I worry if it was futuristic? I loved Battlefield 2142. And while I would rather have a World War II Battlefield, I would be completely content if they wanted to bring it back into the futuristic setting. I'm really surprised when I went online and saw how many people were adamant that they did not want to see another futuristic Battlefield game. And it's like, okay, I get that because we've seen uh, Call of Duty kind of head in that direction. We've gotten stuff like Titanfall, Halo, Destiny, and stuff to that matter. But this is the first time that Battlefield has stepped into the futuristic setting in a very, very long time. Uh, the one thing that confuses me is that a lot of people that bring up this complaint make the comparison that if they do go futuristic, that it's just going to be a Call of Duty clone. Has anyone else played Battlefield 2142? Because while, well, yeah, they share similarities, I guess, to Call of Duty because of that futuristic setting, Battlefield 2142 was an amazing game. It's honestly one of my favorite in the franchise. It basically was Battlefield, but with futuristic mechs. You had, instead of having tanks, you had these gigantic robots. Instead of having helicopters, you had these futuristic, like, helicopter jet things. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And so if you're worried that it's going to turn into a wall-running simulator, like Call of Duty, in Titanfall, 
I wouldn't worry about that if it was anything like Battlefield 2142. Uh, the thing that I like about the futuristic setting is that it gives developers free reign to basically do whatever they want. They are not constrained by modern technology. If they want to have a gigantic mech, they can do that. They want to create a gun that you would never see in real life, they can do that as well because it's the goddamn future. They can do whatever they want. This is what I like about the futuristic setting. Yes, I know it some turns some people off, pew pew laser beams and all that, but what I enjoy about it is that it gives developers the creative freedom to really delve on in and create mechanics or gameplay that you wouldn't get in a modern military setting. Uh, all this being said though, we have no idea what the next Battlefield game is going to be. It could be World War II. I'm really hoping that's the case. It could be modern military or it could be Battlefield 2143. I think what I'm excited for is I just want another Battlefield game. Hardline was fun, but it really hasn't captured me like the core Battlefield franchise. And so you give me futuristic, you go back to World War, you make it modern. I'm going to be content. And I just personally, I just want to see what they're going to deliver on. The next question comes from Nick and it is, what do you think about a game mode in Rainbow Six Siege where there's a high value target and one defender is chosen to be the HVT and the task of the attackers is to kill him. Now while this sounds good in theory if you are working with a bunch of friends and could be a lot of fun as soon as you get a game mode like this with a bunch of random players it would turn into a nightmare. You are putting a lot of faith into one person to not go out and be an idiot and go get themselves killed at the start of the round. I could foresee a lot of trolling, I could foresee a lot of stupidity occurring where the HVT tries to go Rambo or do his thing, or not even go Rambo, just kind of being passive and gets himself killed because he position, positions himself in a r random wonky location. Uh, the other reason why I'm not too keen on this idea is that it puts the defenders at a disadvantage. Even if you're working with friends, even if you got a group of five, because the HVT can't be on the front lines, you don't want him to get randomly headshot to lose the round for you, uh, he's going to have to make himself scarce. And so really what it turns into is the HVT is hiding and everyone else is around trying to defend and that turns it into a more of a four versus five situation. Uh, Battle of the Hardline had something very similar to this. I think it was called VIP or something along those lines. And it ran into many of the issues that I just described. A lot of the times the VIP would just run out in the open and get himself killed. It was, it was very frustrating. I think it was one of the reasons why that game mode really didn't take off. And so unless this HVT has something special up his sleeve. Maybe he has an ass load of armor. Maybe he can take multiple headshots before he's taken out. Uh, but unless that's not the case, then I just don't really see this being all that enjoyable because of the reasons that I outlined. Uh, maybe you guys will disagree with me. Maybe you think this is a really interesting concept and you'd love to see it added into Rainbow Six Siege. But at least from my viewpoint, it has a fair amount of issues with it. The next question is, to counter the spawn killing that is so prevalent in Rainbow Six Siege at the moment, or the simple tactic of everyone rushing an entrance on the plane to kill the attackers, how about instead of killing them when they get detected, the red barrier that prevents enemies leaving at the preparation phase stays on the doors and windows for an extra 5 to 10 seconds. That is a wonderful idea. Personally, I like the fact that the defenders can go outside every once in a while to catch the attacking team by surprise. If you're playing on particular maps, it is it is a very valid tactic, but I do agree with you that at the start of the round, it gets ridiculous. Plane has turned into one of my, my least favorite maps because at the start of the round, it just turns into watching the doorways because you know, you know for certain that someone's going to peek their head out and try to get a cheeky kill on you. It happens all the time and it gets very frustrating. There's other maps like Cafe where it is a nightmare in some situations. Uh, if you take out the garage door, for example, you can rush out as a defender and then quickly line up like two headshots. That's happened to me on numerous occasions as well. And so I think this is perfect. It doesn't pop punish the defenders any more than it really does right now. It just gives the offensive team a little bit more opportunity to close the gap. And uh, yeah, I, I would love if this was added into Rainbow Six Siege, and I think it's a great idea. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.